before Diddy and Bad Boy Records, there was Uptown Records. Before Uptown Records, there was Nia Records. Before Diddy started his own label, Bad Boy Records, he worked as an intern for Andre Harrell, who was the owner of Uptown Records. Uptown Records introduced Mary J. Blige to the world and many hit acts such as Jodeci, Guy, Heavy D and the Boys, I'll Be Sure, Soul For Real, and the list goes on. Before Andre started Uptown Records in 1986, he was just a kid from the streets of Harlem who was influenced by the upcoming hip-hop culture and rapped in a two-man group called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with his partner Alonzo Brown. Andre and Alonzo were part of the Harlem World crew. Harlem World was a club in a venue that was owned by a guy named Fats. Fats and my uncles were partners in the streets of Harlem. My uncles were already heavy in the music business and taught Andre everything he knew about the music business. My uncles mentored and raised Andre to become one of the most successful music business entrepreneurs of our time. My uncles met Andre through Fats right after they made their hit song, Hooked on Your Love. Fats asked my uncles to take these two kids and put them on the remix of Hooked on Your Love. This would be one of the first hip-hop remixes in history. This song was also one of the first hip-hop songs to be considered conscious rap because they spoke about the Ayatollah Khomeini and they were also talking about ISIS way before ISIS was even an issue. It was the first conscious rap song ever according to the Hip Hop Museum. Andre worked with my uncles at their label, Nia Records, and helped to write and produce songs for such artists as Captain Rock. After learning as much as he could from my uncles about the music business, Andre decided to start his own record label called Uptown Records. Satisfactory, gentlemen. These are your directives to boost profits. Tour support, cut 30%. Sales, increase 20%. Music videos, Slash their budgets in half, and there will be no new act signed for the rest of the fiscal year. But sir, I think you're making a mistake. There's a lot of new groups out there making music that I think could turn this company around. Well, who are these new groups? What is this new music? <laughs> Uptown Records would soon get the attention of young hustler Sean Puffy Combs, and the rest is history. Uptown Records headquarters was literally right across the street from my uncle's studio, which was called Concrete Records. We had a studio in Times Square in the heart of Manhattan on, what was it, 47th Street? I think, I think it was between 47th and 46th Street, right in the heart of Times Square. My cousin Omar, who was the son of my uncle Tahaka, worked with Andre Harrell at Uptown Records. But it was Puffy who took the situation to the next level to go on and become one of the biggest hip-hop entrepreneurs in history. Every move that Andre made when he started Uptown Records, my uncles were his consultants. While securing his deal with MCA, my uncles did the consulting. From what I understand, Andre didn't know shit about the music business before he met my uncles, and if it wasn't for Andre, there wouldn't be a Diddy, or there wouldn't be a Notorious Big. I mean, they would have been here, but who knows how their story would have played out if it wasn't for influential people such as Andre Harrell and my uncles in Andre's life. My uncles helped shape music and hip-hop history. When I speak in these videos... You aren't just getting the knowledge that I attained through my own personal research. You're also getting decades of game and knowledge that I've been fortunate to be surrounded by all of my life. Music was always in my family. 
my great grandmother, she was a traveling piano player and she moved around traveling and teaching people piano and her daughter became a piano player and a piano teacher. Her daughter, Dorothy, she passed on her music skills and music knowledge to her children, my father, my two aunts, and my uncles, the twins. Music was always in my family. Uh, my uncles were music business entrepreneurs. And from the 70s, they were in music bands. They played music. They're from Harlem, and they were in association with the entertainment and the scene, the Harlem scene, the New York scene. And they made music because there was always music in the household. My grandmother being a piano player, they took on music. And one of my uncles was a piano player. The other one took on guitar. And before they knew it, they were making music and working with greats like Jimi Hendrix and people like Muhammad Ali. And they were just on the scene. I mean, that's this is you know that's where everything happened. Like hip hop, a lot of that all happened in the Bronx in New York. And my uncles, they were right in the middle of it. They started a record label in the '80s called Nia Records, and they released a lot of music. They they used to have a studio. I remember as early as five, six years old. I remember my uncles having a studio in their apartment in Harlem, and at one of their apartments in Harlem, and. I remember all this uh, studio equipment in their house from an early age. I remember there always being a studio. We always had a piano in the house or my uncles, they always had studio equipment, microphones, big mixing decks in their house. And uh, I was just remember knowing my uncles made music and sometimes I'd see them on TV. I'd see like award shows. We'd be all watching award shows and, I didn't know what was going on. And I remember one time I seen my uncles come out on this. They were like, they were on this award show. I don't know if it's the Grammys or some type of award show. And I seen them walk out on stage and I'm like, wow, I see my uncles on TV for the first time. And I'm like, I'm like this little kid and I'm looking at my uncles and they're on TV and I didn't understand how, what was going on? Like how are they on TV? And I'm looking at them right now. So they started a label called Nia Records and they released a lot of um, a lot of early hip hop records. They were responsible for lease, releasing a lot of these records. They worked with a lot of the greats. I I don't want to miss a few, miss anybody, but they worked with a lot of early hip hop artists. And uh, soon enough, they started working with uh, new kids on the block. And they made some platinum records. They had some hit songs with new kids on the block. And I just remember them always doing well. I remember. And both having, they were twins. I remember they both had matching Cadillacs and they both had matching Acuras. And the next thing I know, they had this studio in the heart of Times Square. And uh, it was called Concrete Records. And this was the coolest place I could ever remember. Um, you know, we were in the heart of Times Square. This is when there were a bunch of arcades around. And we were kids, so we used to love being in Manhattan because we loved going to the arcade. And then there were always musicians at the studio. And, you know, I heard stories of Wu-Tang Clan. They recorded their first album at, you know, some of their first album at my uncle's studio. And, um, you know, they even gave my uncle's credit on their, you know, the first album, Wu-Tang Clan release. You'll see in the credits, my uncle's Thalims, you'll see their name on that. And I remember meeting father mc who was signed to uptown mca and that's when andre harrell had uptown mca was literally a block over from us so i mean this is where all the early hip-hop classic records were being made like i was like right in the middle of that and um i remember one night hanging out i'm like 10 years old and i'm hanging out with kc from jodeci and this is when he was signed to uptown mca and this is when puffy was or P. Diddy or whatever you know him as, Sean Combs was being it was Andre Harrell's apprentice and their office was like right across the street from my uncle's and you know they they'd sometimes you know they'd have they'd have sessions at my uncle's studio. And I remember hanging out with Casey from Jodeci. He had the new Lexus coupe and was out drinking Heineken, like a twenty the deuce deuce of Heineken. 
and I'm just like, wow, like I'm really, I was just like born into the game. It was like, it was cool. You know, I remember being in the studio with producers like Mark Sparks making songs and I'm sitting there like 10, 11 years old, just, you know, and then it was just, I, I was just in the middle of it from an early age. And, uh, you know, I could tell the business was starting to change as my uncles grew older, the music business was starting to get younger. And that's where guys like Puff Daddy came in and they they took over. And that's a brief history of how I got started in the music business and the entertainment business. It was my family. I was born into it. I was always interested in it. It was always around me. So when you hear me talking and giving advice and making these videos, it's not only coming from a personal place and from my own research, like I said, it's coming from decades and decades of knowledge from the OGs that taught me and I've gotten advice from and Andre Harrell has gotten advice from and advice Diddy got. This all came from the people who my uncles were working with and who they got their advice from. And information is constantly supposed to be shared and spread. So, this is my history lesson on how I got started. I hope you enjoyed. No matter how hard I try, I can't tell my uncle's story better than they can tell it. So, you definitely have to go check out that new book, Jimi Hendrix and the Ghetto Fighters in Harlem World. It's available now. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Going to be giving, putting out a lot more informative videos and information on how you can also win in the music business and how you can make hit songs and build good, lasting relationships, not burn bridges, make money for you, yourself, your family, and, you know, just live a prosperous life doing, making your art. You know, that's the most important thing. 